35 years ago, Gary Turk sent the first email spam message, an advertisement for our digital computers. And as we know, that was just the tip of the iceberg of a problem that got much more serious and much more prevalent. As spam, as email became saturated with spam, the bad guys needed to find the next place to move to. So they followed us to the social web. What we're going to talk about now is the next frontier of web abuse, something we call social spam which includes reputation hijacking, social spear phishing, malicious user-generated content, account takeover, and more. And just as with email spam, these are problems that started out as a nuisance, but quickly grew to something much, much more severe and much more dangerous, as was witnessed this weekend with the uh, Whitney Houston malware scam on many popular media sites. While working on the world's largest email platform, Yahoo Mail, we saw firsthand that as email spam reached 95% of all traffic, that the bad guys started moving and looking for new places to innovate. And where they moved to was to the social web in droves, where they were excited by the rapid influx of new users and by the relatively low levels of skepticism or mistrust in this new form of communication. So how do people deal with these problems today? Many companies deal with a virtual sweatshop where they have individuals looking at every single account, every single transaction, every single comment. Not only does this fail to scale, but it is slow, reactive, and misses many, many types of problems. Other companies deal with this through a complex Rube Goldbergian systems of, of rules and uh, configuration where they try to identify these patterns. These are also prone to many, many false positives, and they can be very expensive to maintain. In fact, the smallest media company we're dealing with has more than five people devoted just to these sorts of problems. So how does Impermium work? Our customers from across the web, companies large and small, send their traffic to us, their social transactions, in real time. Our machine learning behavioral models then crunch through not just the content, but also the context, the user behind the transaction for spam, for hate speech, for malware, for cross-site scripting and the like. And through this technology, what we're able to do is to provide a network effect that is much more effective than what any in-house solution could possibly provide. So leaving here today, what you should each do is think about, catalog the social features that your companies offer and that you rely upon on a daily basis. Think about how many of those are vulnerable to these types of social attacks. And then consider how these companies would be able to build defenses on their own without a partner such as Impermium. Because it's starting to look a lot like the problems that we saw back in 1978, and we don't want to miss the writing that's on the wall. All Thank right. you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I have a question with with your solution. Um, you know, there's whitelist, blacklist, and user participation. How much of your uh, spam and, and uh, violations are identified through people alerting you, and how much is machine learning and automated? A large part of our, our work and where we've put our, our patent and our development effort has been into behavioral models and anomaly models that are mostly machine learning. We definitely use humans because it's important to have a signal when somebody's telling you, hey, this is bad, and you want to train off of that. But we get a leverage of probably 10,000 to 1 to 10 million to 1. So you mentioned... You mentioned some of, your, some of the other products out there in terms of the false positives. What are you doing that's different in terms of the false positives and how are you measuring that? What we do for false positives is by looking very broadly across a wide variety of sites, we maintain not only examples of bad, but also examples of good. And our trusted user database spans from sites like a sports site to a blog to a fantasy dating site, what have you, that allows us to really understand who are the good users and to differentiate whether it's somebody cracking a joke about Viagra or truly trying to distribute it. So Do you have any impact on spear phishing? I mean, where it's a directed individual that has been socially, you know, compromised, I guess, at this point in time. Absolutely. With spear phishing or with social spear phishing, what we look at is the account compromise vector, which is where is there a deviation from the normal patterns that the user has into uh, this particular case. 
And unlike a homegrown siloed solution, because we're looking broadly, somebody would need to check your sports blog and your resume page and your LinkedIn account before they get to the, to the compromise moment. That gives us much more robustness. Do people opt in to this, or do you insert yourself into the workflow of somebody like Google or Facebook? or how do you, Where do you fit? Sure, we operate yeah, sure. as a subscription-based SaaS model, and we'll tell you more at our booth right over there. Oh, good segue. Yeah, no, okay. Thank you.